Dear participants and colleagues, we are now going to present our views about the rapid characterization of coconut varieties in farmers' fields during a survey. First, we will present the context of these surveys. Then we will talk about the need to photograph and geolocate coconut palms, then the measurements to be taken on the fruits, stem, and leaves of coconut palms. Then we will discuss other parameters that can be measured. Most of what will be presented to you in this talk has never been published in any textbook. These are opinions that result from our personal experiences during the many surveys that we have carried out in the Pacific countries or elsewhere. These methods have therefore not been validated by Cogent or any other institution. As an international expert, Dr. Roland Boerdijks was very often confronted with situations where he only had a few days to carry out prospecting over a large territory. In this situation, there is a dilemma between observing many varieties and precisely describing these varieties. The more time we spend describing a variety, the less time we will have to assess the richness of the territory in terms of varieties. We can take the example of a recent work that we carried out in French Polynesia, in the Tuamotus archipelago. This archipelago includes just under 80 islands and atolls in the southern Pacific Ocean. They constitute the largest chain of atolls in the world. Thanks to the Department of Agriculture, we were able to charter a boat to visit 13 atolls. We stayed a day or two on each atoll to observe coconut varieties. It was very adventurous. Some ports are dangerous and difficult to access. But Roland says it was the most interesting survey he has ever done. For French Polynesia, creating of the poster and a very nice catalogue of farmers' varieties required about three months of field survey and three months of office work. As far as we know, this is the first catalogue of farmers' varieties ever published. In the 2010s, Cogent tried to publish such a farmer's catalogue, but it failed. This should be carried out in many other countries. Such catalogues are crucial, because most of farmers and gardeners are not aware of the amazing diversity of coconut varieties in their own countries. Most of them know mainly the varieties in their villages or region, they do not know how to recognize and identify the varieties existing in their country. So, farmers often do not benefit from the whole national genetic diversity. Here is an example of an amazing Polynesian variety of compact dwarf, with a flexuous trunk like a snake. In our last catalogue, it was described over four pages, because it's really worth it. Here we see pages 1 and 2. Here are pages 3 and 4 of the description of this snake coconut tree. This variety only exists in situ, at farmers' homes, and is not preserved in any ex situ collection. We recently started to do the first coconut catalogue for Hawaii. Same kind of coconut varietal catalogue is also needed from many Pacific Island countries, such as Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Tonga, Tuvalu and many others. We are willing and very interested to participate in these crucial projects if you need us. We favoured an approach where only one to three hours were devoted to the description of a variety. Indeed, we preferred to spend time scanning the landscape and detecting the most beautiful and rarest varieties, rather than describing in detail only two or three varieties. Of course, if you are a researcher or a farmer working locally in the country, and you have more time, you will need to describe these varieties in more detail. However, we think it is better to make a quick first assessment and explore the territory thoroughly. Then you can go back to the interesting strains for more in-depth evaluations. On the other hand, it is crucial to study the ethnological aspects. Cultural differences in landscapes need to be considered. For example, when he prospected in Fiji, Dr. Roland Burdikes learned that a particular island called Kaioa had a population originating from Tuvalu. He insisted on visiting this island. We found some special varieties there and, in particular, 
a green dwarf native to Tuvalu. In our opinion, the most important thing is to take photographs according to the standardized methods that have been developed for the varietal catalog. These photographs describe the varieties better than any number. It is necessary to use a camera or a telephone which allows the geolocation of the observed coconut palms. These photographs show the whole tree a bunch of coconuts, the inflorescence, and the dried coconuts, for drinking, or in equatorial or longitudinal pairs. There are guidelines that describe how to take these photographs. Preferably, photos should be taken with human beings, which gives an ethnological and friendly dimension to the process. You can duplicate the photo of the whole tree, one with a character and the other without. Normally, you must ask people for written permission to post their photo. Anyway, Dr. Roland Bourdykes never did it. Signing a paper scares people. Sometimes he filmed people giving a verbal agreement. In general, people were flattered and proud to be included in a book describing coconut varieties, it valued them and highlighted their important role in conservation. No one ever complained about being included in the book. You need a harvesting sickle with a 2 to 3 meter handle to clean the palms and harvest the fruits. If possible and if the car is big enough, you can bring a small ladder. If the survey concerns tall coconut palms, a climber must join the team. If it rains and the stem of the coconut palms are slippery, it will not be possible for him to climb. You can also use a drone to photograph the bunches of very high coconut palms. In most cases, the photos of fresh coconuts are taken directly in the field, at the bottom of the coconut palms. We take the opportunity to weigh these whole fresh coconuts, then open them and remove the coconut water and weigh them again. The sugar content of coconut water is estimated using a portable refractometer. One degree bricks is equivalent to one gram of sucrose per 100 grams of solution. Then the coconut water is tasted. You should note if this water seems acidic, if it seems to have bubbles, like champagne, and if it is pleasant to drink. The second priority is to assess the weight of the fruit components. For dry nuts, it is best to take samples, assign a code and number to each nut, and pack them in a bag. Then the bags are transported to a suitable place for cutting the nuts. It is, for example, a workshop or a garage which have water and if possible, electricity. There is a model of electric saw that is well suited for cutting coconuts. It is a variable speed reciprocating saw, electric saw, with blades at least 30 centimeters long. If you choose a model that works with batteries, you need at least three. In gardens, coconuts are often available in very limited numbers. There is a procedure that allows you to simultaneously photograph the coconuts and assess the weight of their components. Weigh the whole nut. Then we cut this nut with a saw, we weigh it without the water. Then you must take the pictures of half coconut fruits with their kernels. On the half coconuts, you can also measure the thickness of the kernel and the shell. Then we remove the kernel from the fruit and weigh the fruit without the kernel. In most cases, we did not measure the weight of the shell. However, it is possible to extract the shell and weigh it. There may be a pedagogical interest in keeping the half nuts without kernels for display. Instead of installing a wooden panel with nails, it is possible to photograph the fruits by placing them on the ground on a blue-gray cloth, in the shade, and in a place where the light is not too directional. Then, Photoshop can do miracles, but not the impossible. When we edited the Cogent World Catalog, we received many bad photos, some of which were unrecoverable. In second priority, it is necessary to carry out the measurements of stem, or trunk. The height of the coconut tree is measured from the ground to the base of the last living leaf. Other measurements relate to the diameter of the stipe at 20 cm above the ground level, and at 100 or 150 cm above the ground, according to the varietal types. It is also necessary to measure the distance between 11 leaf scars on the stipe, 
from 1 meter or 1 meter 50 above the ground and upwards. This distance corresponds to the length of 10 internodes, and it is very useful to distinguish dwarfs from tall types. As a third priority, leaf measurements must be carried out. These are made on leaf number, which is usually horizontal and has coconuts approximately the size of a fist. As this leaf can rarely be cut, these measures are usually only feasible on small palms. We measure the length of the leaf, the number of leaflets on one side of the leaf, the width of the leaflets, the width and the thickness of the petiole. In my opinion, the easiest parameter to measure and the most important is the width of the leaflets. Indeed, this parameter makes it possible to distinguish compact dwarfs, which are generally characterized by very wide leaflets. Other important information is the observations of pests and disease. If there are symptoms on the palms, you should try to quantify, photograph, and record them. On the inflorescence, the length and thickness of the peduncle is an important criterion, since it concerns the solidity of the support to the bunch and the ease of harvesting by cutting. It is possible to estimate the production of coconut palms by counting the coconuts from leaf 14, the horizontal leaf and which bears fruits as big as a fist. Finally, it may be wise to take samples of leaflets or sawdust from the stem in order to carry out DNA analyzes later. This can avoid having to return to the field to take these samples. Dear participants and colleagues, thank you for listening.